Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. I don't know if it's coming through on your side, but there's a lot of light emanating from behind me. Please do not take this as a metaphor for me being any more than just a regular guy. It just so happens to be very bright outside. This is a video about uh, making next with some old school power tools. Okay, I don't spend a lot of time on internet forums talking about how to make guitars. Um, because usually, well, I think it's a waste of time. If you haven't read my blog on this exact topic, I'm going to leave a link to that below. Please go check that out. Um, but anyway, there usually seems to be on like the actual guitar building tiny bits of guitar forums. There's two camps. One is the CNC camp and one is the not CNC camp. Uh, here at Texas Toast, we fall I guess you could say we fall clearly into the not CNC camp. Not because we don't appreciate what the uh, computer numerically controlled machines can do, but because we don't have one. Um, and we actually kind of dig that we don't have a CNC machine. Um, you know, we have lots and lots and lots of vintage power tools that you would have found in the old school, um, you know, guitar factories back in the day. And uh, we're going to use some of those today. But um, yeah, you know, we do not think that, you know, because we don't have a CNC, we don't think for a second that you put a chunk of wood in a CNC machine and push a button and then out comes the guitar. Um, I think that CNCs are really cool and I think that um, if you want an affordable guitar, it's probably going to be made on a CNC machine just because the, you know, economy of scale. Um, having said that, if you're making two, three, ten, twenty guitars a year, I don't see the real need for a CNC machine. Um, you know, if you unless you just really, really like CNC machines. Anyway, I don't want to get into whether or not CNC or you know uh, uh, is cool or not. I, I like CNC machines, and um, all of my bridges are made on a CNC machine. A lot of my jigs are made on a CNC machine. Uh, but here we use tools that they would have had in the old days. And before anybody goes, you just can't afford a CNC machine, I will put my invoices for my vintage tools up against your CNC machine any day. But uh, the other side of that coin on the, uh, the forums is you get the CNC guys who say stuff like, uh, yeah, well, you just can't afford it. I love that one. Or, well, if you're making stuff by hand, you should just be scratching at it and gnawing at it with your teeth until it looks like a guitar. And that's just asinine. Um, you know, let's get past the whole CNC or handmade or vintage tools or this, that, or the other. We make guitars the way we make them. You make them the way you make them. I don't care. So, enough with the bullshit talk and enough with the ranting. Uh, you guys can rant on the internet forums. Today, we are going to make necks. Uh, we're going to shape necks using some old school tools. We're going to use uh, my beloved pin router, we're going to use the table router, and we're going to use something called the deadhead sander. So in this first little bit, let's check out how we take a neck that is mostly square and make it mostly not square. Okay, so we are going to take this neck and run it across the table router. This has a three quarter inch round over bit in it, or as Mrs. Texas Toast laughs at me for saying, in it. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to put, it's going to impart a round over and really kind of help us start the neck profile. Um, so on guitar necks, we go from the center line of the bit to the uh, right in between the nut and the first fret, and we go to the 13th fret, and that gives us this right here. Then we're going to chase it on the deadhead sander. So let's check this out. Okay, remember, there's no better safety tip than to use all your personal protective equipment. In fact, I've gotten beat up in the last few weeks on YouTube for not wearing all of my safety gear. So, when we, when we route this neck, we're going to use our earplugs so we don't go deaf. And remember, we're going to use our safety glasses. We're going to use our headphones over our earplugs. Wait. Hold on, I should put my respirator on first. Whoa. Then I'm going to put my hair bones on. Then I'm going to put my safety shield on. And I'm also going to use this. You want to make sure you don't have any long sleeves or jewelry when you do this. Make sure your hair is pulled back too.
starts out like. It starts out as a square and we cut away this and that. And then we, we trim it out to this on the bandsaw. And now what we're going to do is we're going to round over these edges so that uh, it makes it a little bit easier on the deadhead sander. Any material we can take off of here means less material we have to take off of there. So this neck blank goes into this jig here. I'm coming. Okay. Like this, we use one of the, the peg head holes to mount it there. We have a strap clamp down here. And then we're going to run it through the router, the pin router with a 7 8 roundover bit on it. So let's take a look at that. Here is the neck that we are going to work on next on the deadhead sander. Uh, this neck is John's neck and it is going to have an asymmetric contour to it. That is to say it's not going to be perfectly arched, it's going to kind of go at a, it's going to come up at an angle. The center line is not going to be in between the um, D and the G string. The center line is going to be right on the D string. So that's going to be cool. So, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. The deadhead sander, you know, that was a real game changer for us because we used to carve everything by hand. Actually, we started with the copy carver and decided that wasn't such a great uh, option for next. So the deadhead sander was, we looked into it and that was what the guys in the old factories used. So that's what we decided to build. Let me walk you through a little bit of what our deadhead sander looks like. Okay, if you have watched my previous video on the deadhead sander, you will note that it is not a true deadhead sander. Um, the, the true deadhead sander, this uh, surface right here would have a drive wheel opposite it and that would sort of be that. What we've been able to do here is we have, um, we've taken a standard edge sander. This is an old school one. It's an old Acme one like the Coyote used. And we have added this assembly here to give us uh, an area where we can where we can fit next to so it will look er, I'm gonna get it in the camera the neck will go on to the deadhead sanding surface and you can rock it back and forth like that okay so I've got some lines on my neck here is where his body ends so here is the line that I want to try to work to uh, I'm gonna try to get as much of this guy shaped as I can on the sander uh, we might have to use some hand tools to get that uh, all the way sussed out. We have our center line, which is not quite on center because remember the um, the apex of the contour is centers on the D string. I've got my calipers here. I've got a pencil here, and I've got a contour gauge. So uh, I'm gonna turn the unit on, and we're gonna see some serious shit. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of insight uh, to some of the cool power tools that we use. Again, um, Texas Toast is something, we have a, a, an aesthetic that we call vintage tooled. 
it, um, you know, it's not for everybody. Uh, not everybody's gonna go out and, uh, you know, build a deadhead sander or try to find a pin router. And it's one of those things where, uh, just like anything else, you can't just throw money at something uh, without learning how to use the tools properly and without developing some of those skills needed to use the tools. But in this case, uh, if you have access to a deadhead sander, you should absolutely give it a try. If you have access to my shop, you should come over and try it there too. Uh, I would love to have any of you guys who want to give some of these tools a try. Come on over and uh, see what you think of some of the, the old school stuff, uh, especially you CNC guys. I think what you might find is that um, there's, uh, there's a lot to be said for um, doing it the old school way. Um, it sure does save on programming. So imagine, you know, I don't do asymmetrical necks all the time. If I had to program my CNC machine to carve one, well, that's a lot of programming. I could just go make it on the deadhead sander. Um, so uh, if you have any questions about the tools that we use, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you uh, like the video, why don't you go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and click that little subscribe button right now. And don't forget, share the video with your friends, you guys. So this is Matt at Texas Toast Guitars. Um, you know, this might be one of the last videos we do this year. It might be the last video that we do this year. I haven't decided yet. So if I don't see you before New Year's, everybody have a happy New Year. And uh, I want to send a quick shout out to all my subscribers who have stuck with me and uh, all the guys who send comments and keep that whole community thing going. That is, uh, it's really, really cool of you guys. So uh, have a great and uh, happy holiday and a festive New Year and all that other stuff. And uh, we will see you guys in 2018. And uh, the slogan's still going to be the same. This is Matt at Texas Toast Guitars reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. You look like Norm Abrams' Master Carpenter. Yeah, good. Here, let me, let me button up a little bit so they don't quite look so... Can you try to talk in a New England accent when you when you're describing the tool?